Ready to learn about sewing that perfect quarter inch seam? In this video, you'll first review how to calculate seam allowances and then how to rotary cut rectangles. Then you'll get some tips for setting up your machine to sew quarter inch seams while completing this simple rectangle block. You can add this block to the start of your sampler quilt or use it for another project such as our eyeglass case. To get started on any block, you need to find your cutting sizes. The easiest way to do this is to check your pattern. You can download this pattern for free at learnhowtoquilt.com under Free Patterns. However, I'd like you to get in the habit of figuring out the cutting size on your own. Since the final or finished block is 6 inches, I drew a 6 inch block. I moved halfway down to draw this line. To make this block, you'll need two rectangles of equal size. Add a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. One quarter plus six inches plus another quarter is six and a half inches. And if you go this way, one quarter plus three inches plus a quarter inch is three and a half inches. You'll be cutting two three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. Make sure your fabric's been pressed and line up the grain lines. I've used tape to mark that three and a half inch by six and a half inch shape. You don't have to do this. I'm just hoping that uh, this tape will make it easier for you to see. So this is the size that I want. But before I cut that, I've got a lot of extra fabric here that gets in the way. So I want to cut that out. But at the same time, I also want to get two straight edges to make it easier for my final cut. I've lined up both my ruler lines and my mat lines to sort of double check that everything's nice and straight and I'm ready to cut. Always cut away from your body. So to cut this I could come across but that's not something I recommend. I'm going to reposition myself I've turned the corner and I'm going to cut away from my body. And so let's get rid of that excess fabric. I've lined up my straight edges with the lines on the mat and then I line up my ruler, double checking to make sure that the lines on my ruler line up with the lines on my mat. And for the most part, that's going to be the half inch marks on my ruler lining up with these lines. Remember to cut away from your body, turn the corner, and cut. And I can double check to make sure they've been cut out correctly um, by using my pattern. Before sewing your pieces together, you'll want to set up your machine for sewing quarter inch seams. I like to use this quarter inch foot because it makes it easy to sew when the fabric and the foot line up. Most machines don't come with this attachment, but you can order one for your machine. If you're planning on quilting, this is a must. You can use any foot, but the quarter inch foot will make your job much easier. You'll want to check your machine for quarter inch guidelines. Once again, not all machines have these. Most of the time, this guideline runs into the feed dogs. If you're not sure where your guidelines are, you can use graph paper or you can use your rotary ruler to find those. First of all, let me tell you, you need to turn off your sewing machine because you don't want to get stuck with the needle. I'm not turning off mine because I need the light for you to see. My ruler is lined up with both the vertical and the horizontal lines on my machine and my needle will come down at exactly the quarter inch spot. So it should end up on that quarter inch line and if everything's lined up I can take tape to mark that spot. I've taped the front and I also like to tape the back. Sometimes it helps me keep everything nice and straight. When everything's taped down I like to double check with my graph paper just to make sure if I bring this down and I, my needle comes down right in the middle of the line 
that this is lined up. And let me scoot this back a little. Do the same thing. This is lined up. When everything's in line, then I'm ready to sew. Some people like to use tape and to build up like a wall here by taping it. Oops, that went over the feed dogs. You don't want to go over the feed dogs. Build a wall here with lots of pieces of tape so that when you go to sew your pieces together, they butt up against this wall and it'll help you stay on track. You can buy these strips that basically do the same thing. They'll stick to your machine but then you can pull them off and reuse them again. When sewing patchwork you'll want to use a regular stitch length with a neutral color of thread. I'll be using red thread to make it easier for you to see. I like to start with a little scrap of fabric. I call that a leader. I'll sew a few stitches and then I take my patchwork. I put right sides together. I want to make sure that everything's lined up, not just the side that I'm going to sew. I want, to, I want each one of these corners to match up. When everything lines up, I can pin this side to be sewn, or I prefer to sew without pins. Pins will distort your patchwork. So if you're just sewing a straight line like this, try to get by without using any pins. Take your pieces, line it up, and begin sewing. You'll want this to butt up against that leader. Gently guide your fabric. You don't want to pull it or push it. You just want to touch it lightly. And as you get to the end, grab another scrap of fabric, and I'll call this my follower. Butt that up against your piece, and sew. In the next video in this series, I'll talk more about why these scraps help with accuracy and can also save you time. Here's my block ready to be pressed. Today I'll be pressing to the dark, but most of the time I press for ease of construction. We'll talk more about that in later videos. If you're not sure which side is darker, taking a black and white photo will help. I register the seam by pressing down. This causes the threads to nestle into the fabric. I fold back the dark fabric and then press in an up and down motion. I don't want to go back and forth like this because that will pull the fabric and I don't want that. You want to press up and down. After pressing, use your pattern to check your accuracy. You can use this block in the sampler quilt. Make some more for a table runner. I also like to use this block when I need a quick baby quilt. This simple block can be arranged to form many different patterns. In the next video in this series, you'll find out about another piecing technique that uses strips so you can make multiple blocks quickly. You'll also learn about sewing a scant quarter inch. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. We'd love to post photos of your completed projects. You can find more info about that in our gallery.